What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm doing a video which is kind of like a part two to a video I did a while ago which is how to correctly price your Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Now I've been getting a lot of DMs, a lot of messages since then saying hey Spanko I have these cards from a long time ago. How much is it worth? Can you give me an approximation? Can you get, give me what you know my cards are worth nowadays? Are they worth a lot of money? Are they not? Because a lot of times cards can look like they're very expensive. Cards can look like they're worth something just because they're older but that's not always the case and then on top of that because there's so many reprints in Yu-Gi-Oh you guys might have a version of the card that is very expensive but there could be the same card with a different version that's not very expensive at all. So for today's video, I'm actually going to be showing you how to go through Yu-Gi-Oh prices and accurately approximate the value of your cards. Now the card I'm gonna be showing off in today's video is the Blue Eyes White Dragon, and the reason for that is just because it's the card that has been reprinted the most. And as you guys can see over here at the top, I have a bunch of different Blue Eyes tabs open that I'm gonna get into. But if you guys enjoy these kind of videos, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more. And I just wanted to show you guys that like hey sometimes these things may seem easy but you know a lot of people don't know a lot of people who are getting, coming back into the game don't really know how to price their cards don't really have the resources don't know where to go so i'm going to be leaving a link to tcg player as well as some other websites in the description below now you guys could be using tcg player troll and toad card market ebay is really good as well just to check out what cards sold for so there's a lot of different places you guys can check out what your values are for your cards however if you live in north america one of the easiest places to go to is tcg player this video is not sponsored by tcg player however tcg player if you want to sponsor me let your boy know don't worry i'll do an affiliate right now bro that, that's no problem i'll do that link right now but it's very easy to navigate very easy to find what you're looking for and once you just know what to look for everything becomes really simple from there so i'm going to be explaining a few things to look for for when you go on to TCG player and without further ado let's get into the video so we're gonna start off with a blue eyes white dragon very simple you're gonna want to type it out because as you guys can see there's a million different blue eyes that show up and when you guys press one of these it'll take you to certain rarities so I like to type out the full thing so that's the first thing you kind of want to do just type out the full name of your card because it's a lot easier sometimes if a card comes in ultimate rare as well you guys will press like the regular name but they actually will have another name for ultimate rare so that's why I don't like to do that Type in the full name, it's the easiest way to go about it, and it's gonna show you every single card with Blue Eyes White Dragon. So, you guys are gonna see all these different prints of Blue Eyes. As you guys can see, Blue Eyes has a ton of prints. Now, another thing you guys should notice is that a lot of prints for Blue Eyes are in the same artwork. Look at this, I can count one, two, three, four, five. Um, we, got, we got six over here. There's a lot of ways to look at Blue Eyes, and there's a lot of different printings. Now, you guys might be thinking, what does Red Eyes have to do with this? It's because it's from a set called The Legend of Blue Eyes, which is the very first set. But in general, guys, you need to make sure that what you're looking for when you're pricing your cards is the exact cards you're looking for. Because I know a lot of people will see this card and be like, oh, this is a Blue Eyes I have. When in reality, it might not be. Just because it has the same artwork doesn't mean it's the same card. So I'm going to be showing you guys a few things to look into when you are pricing your cards out. So the first thing I'm going to do for you guys is just show you guys what I have opened up right now. So I have this artwork of Blue Eyes. So not this artwork, this artwork right over here. This artwork has a few printings. So I'm going to be showing you guys one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different printings. And there might actually be more. I just opened up seven of them. And I want to show you guys how to tell which one you guys may have. Because this one, actually, if you get it in a really good condition, I'm going to be showing you guys the prices, could be worth a lot of money. However, these other ones, this one specifically, for example, is not worth as much. Even though you guys might see here, like, okay, oh, look, this is worth more than this one is. Well, that's not necessarily true, and I'm going to be explaining to you guys how to actually accurately go about it. So, the first thing you want to do when looking at any card is determine its card number or what I like to call it the card code whatever you guys want to call it some people call it a card code like I do some people call it a card number whatever it is now as you guys can tell this one versus this one versus this one although they're all the same artwork and actually if you go on TCG player they all say ultra rare as well so these are all ultra rare printings however they all have different card codes so what you want to do is right over here I'll zoom in real quick on this blue eyes and right over here on the right side under the artwork it'll give you the card code so if you guys can see over there I know it's a little bit blurry but it says SDK001. So you are going to want to look at your card, look at the bottom right, right under the image, and you're going to check out the card code. Now, if you guys see the card code is SDK001, or in this case, LCKC, or in this case, DUSA, DUSA, or in this case, CT13, you guys want to make sure you guys are accurately looking up at the card code. Now, if you guys look back at this page over here, once you type in Blue Eyes White Dragon, 
and you check out your card and you guys get the correct card code, you're going to want to scroll down and find your card. So once you're scrolling down, once you're scrolling down, whatever, whatever, you're going to see, oh, okay, so this is the blue eyes that it looks like I have. Well, you're going to have to double check. Is it SDK001? If it is, then this is the one and you're going to want to press this link, which I already have open right over here. If it's not though, you're going to continue. Oh, there's another blue eyes with the same artwork right over here. Well, this one is actually not the code I have either. Let's say this one's DDS and you have an LCKC. Well, okay, well, can't be this one then. You're going to go on to the next page. So even though this may seem easy and just like something that's common sense, a lot of people who are just getting back into the game don't actually know about these codes and don't actually know about these kind of stuff. So if that's you, this is a perfect video for you and this is why I'm making this video because I really want everyone to know exactly what their cards are worth. Here's another one with the same artwork. Okay, this is a new one, Mago. This is a uh, maximum gold, whatever, whatever. So you guys are gonna go through TCG Player until you find your card code. So that's the first thing you wanna look for is the card code. So let's say we have assessed that our card code is SDK001 just for simplicity's sake because I have this one open, right? Okay, next thing you're gonna wanna do is look at this right over here, this bottom left under the image, and it's going to say first edition. It may not say first edition. So if it does not say first edition, you are looking at an SDK unlimited blue eyes white dragon. So specifically you wanna say unlimited, it's not going to be first edition. So the reason it's not gonna be first edition is, I mean, kinda of obvious, this first edition stamp is just not over there. So once you have determined that your card is first edition or unlimited print, now you can start looking at the listing. So, first thing you're gonna do, like I said, number. Okay, cool. Okay, is my card first edition or not first edition? Um, okay, well over here it actually does show that it is first edition, let's say. So let's say for this example, you end up finding yourself with a first edition card. Or if you find yourself with an unlimited card, same thing applies. You just have to go based off of what card you have, right? So okay, so now I have a first edition card for this example, perfect. Once you have that figured out, now you can start scrolling down. The nice thing about TCG Player is as you scroll down, it will give you a ton of listings. Now what listings do for you is it gives you an approximation of you know the ballpark range of what your card is worth. Now in our case, let's say for this example, we've determined that it's a first edition. You're gonna wanna skip all these because as you guys can see here, unlimited, 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 you, you don't have an unlimited card. Your card is a first edition card. So you're gonna go to the next page. This is all unlimited as well, so let's keep going. We are gonna go until we find a first edition card. So page four, if it wants to load, okay, we have page four, all unlimited still, page five. So as you guys can see, a lot of people are selling this card. So we're gonna keep going until we find a first edition. And once we do, I'm gonna explain where to go from there. So we're gonna keep going. Wow, there's a lot of pages for this. A few moments later. Okay, so finally on page 17, I found some first editions. However, now you guys have to look at the language. Now languages obviously matter. If your card is not Portuguese, then you're not gonna be going off this. If your card is English, if your card is whatever language, you're gonna wanna find that as well. Obviously, as you guys can see, these are all Portuguese. So we're gonna skip these. Just for simplicity's sake, we're gonna try to find a first edition English one, okay? And it's not gonna say English. If they're English, it's it's just gonna say the regular name. It's not gonna say English because you're gonna they're, they're assuming that it's already English. So. First, first edition I find here for English is a damaged first edition for $150. So the first thing you have to do, once you find out which card is yours, once you find out the code, once you find out the first edition are unlimited, you're gonna wanna look at condition. Now, here's where it gets a little bit tricky. Condition is very subjective. What someone thinks is near mint might be another person's lightly played. Now, an easy way to just determine the condition of the card is when you just look at it, does it look brand new? Does it have scratches? If not, then it looks pretty good. Does it have edge wear? If not, whiting on the back, scratches, creases, you guys can look at all that and from there you guys wanna determine. Now, let me just say this as a quick PSA. If someone ever says pack fresh, that is not a rarity. Pack fresh is not a rarity. Now I understand that pack fresh usually means that it's near mint. However, there's a lot of things that could go wrong. With packing cards, sometimes they're cards that are scratched up through packing, that have whiting on the edges through packing, whatever it is. There's a lot of things that could go wrong during the packaging process. And so pack fresh is not a rarity. Now, if you guys determine that you look at your card and you say, okay, well, my card does have a few scratches on the front. However, outside of a few scratches on maybe the front and the back, you know, there's no real damages to the card itself. There's no real creases. Well, then you're not gonna be wanting to look at a heavily played or a damaged first edition, right? You're gonna wanna be looking for something closer to a lightly played first edition. Now, this is where between you as a buyer or seller and between the other person who is either buying your card or selling you a card, this is where a lot of discussion comes in, right? 
So as you guys can see here, a lightly played first edition is a lot of money. It could go for $475. That's a lot of money. But let's say someone comes up to you and says, okay, well, your card is actually a little bit worse than lightly played. I wouldn't consider it lightly played. You know, there's whiting on the edges, whatever there is. So you might be thinking, okay, is it moderately played? Well, you guys can see there's a big difference between like a moderately played versus a lightly played. Now you guys might see over here that this one's 399, but this one also says foreign. Not sure what language this is. If we press the picture, we can see that this one is actually Portuguese as well. So we're gonna be ignoring that because it's Portuguese. We don't need a Portuguese one. And it shot us back to unlimited. So let me just skip over back to page 20. And so once you hear, this is where a lot of discussion happens between people because just because a card is listed at a certain price doesn't mean that it necessarily has to sell for that price. People can give you offers, etc., etc. especially when you're dealing with high-end cards like this. However, let's say if we look at a, like a lower rarity card where it's the LCKC one, you know, once you get into the lightly played first edition, they're only eight bucks, right? So something like this where it doesn't have a lot of value, you guys can be, you know, a little less flexible with the price because realistically, the separate in a lightly played first edition versus a near mint first edition is like a dollar. So if someone comes up to you and says, hey, this card's near mint, but you see like scratches on it, you don't have to pay $10. You can pay like, okay, yo, would you take $9 for it? Because you see scratches and, you know, a lightly played is like seven-ish dollars. You want to just meet in the middle, something like that. You guys can, you know, be a little bit more firm with this stuff. You're not going to be making a lot of big changes. However, if you find yourself with a very expensive card, this is where a lot of the conversation comes. So this is something that I really can't teach you. This is just something that as you guys learn and as you guys start to look into Yu-Gi-Oh a little bit more, we'll start to get a feel of for yourself. However, you guys can see a lightly played is 475, another one for 475. Here's one for 499, this one is foreign though. Let's say another lightly played here is 800. Now, let me tell you, if you guys see multiple listings that are around the same price and then one that's like way too expensive, just count this as an outlier. Don't look at your card and say, oh, this is an $800 card. A lot of the time people like to use the lowest listed price. So if you guys are looking at a lightly played first edition, for example, you're looking around $475. Now, that doesn't mean you're gonna necessarily get $475 for it. This is because a lot of people don't pay necessarily full value in cash. Some people will like to pay like 80%, not full market value, which is perfectly fine if someone comes up to you and says hey I'll give you 450 for this card I would not say no to that because getting 475 is very unlikely to be completely honest with you if you went to go to sell it to a vendor they'll probably only offer you 60% anyways so it's best to try to get like 80 to 85% for your card and in that case you're really good now let's say you're not dealing with a really expensive card like this. Let's say you're looking at this blue eyes over here, which is the LCKC. So you've determined the number, determined the first edition or unlimited. Now at this card over here, you guys can see the first edition is over here, not over here. That's perfectly fine. Sometimes the first edition does show up here. So make sure to check both for this. But once you guys determine, okay, so let's say my card is this card and you think it's a near mint. Okay, well, a near mint is like $10, all right? So it's very easy to look at this price. And then literally as you go, you guys can use any card. I'll literally search up any card right now. Let's say I search up Elemental Hero Neos, all right? Super easy. Some people have Neos cards from a long time ago, okay? And so these are obviously not the actual Neos. These are all the fusion monsters. Let's say you have this collector's 10 Neos, for example. Let's say you look at the number, CTO3. This one specifically is always gonna be limited edition because it came from a tin. However, if you guys go back, there's a lot of different rarities as you guys can see, right? But the first thing you always wanna do with your rarity is check out the code of the card. So again, this one right here, RYMP. So let's say this is your card. You check if it's first edition or if it's unlimited. Now, when it comes to limited edition or when it comes to dual terminal, et cetera, et cetera, it's kind of like the same thing as first edition. However, limited edition cards will always have limited edition on it. Dual terminal cards will always have dual terminal on it just to tell you where it's from. But again, the most important thing to always look for is the code and then check out the first edition or unlimited because for the most part, it's either gonna be first or unlimited. And from there, you guys can check out the condition. So right here, you have a RYMP, for example. You guys can see they're not really worth a lot. Near my first edition, 28 cents, right? So this is just, again, you can do this with literally any card, any Yu-Gi-Oh card. So it's very simple to go through. Now, once you start getting into these kind of prices, I'm gonna go back to this for a second. Once you get into these big boy prices, what you really want to do is you actually just want to check out eBay. And the reason I prefer to check out eBay is because I want to check what the cards have sold for, not necessarily what they're listed at, right? By the way, right now I'm speaking as like a buyer. Let's say I wanted to buy the card. You see a card listed around 475. Okay, so this is a first edition SDK Blue Eyes White Dragon. So we'll type in right over here, first edition SDK Blue Eyes White Dragon, okay? So you're gonna go here and you're actually, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go to sold listing. So on this left side over here, you're gonna scroll down and it's gonna give you a button right over here that says sold items, you're gonna press it. Completed items will obviously go there as well. Now, 
This one over here, you guys might say, oh, $78. Okay, this one went on auction, and on top of that, if you guys look closer, it's actually not a first edition, because as you guys can see, there's no first edition stamp over here, okay? So that's where you guys have to start paying attention to first edition, unlimited, etc., etc. Now, actually, here's the one that's actually just sold, November 12th. Today, the day I'm recording this is actually November 15th. So this one just sold, actually, for $4.99, and if you scroll down, you guys can look at the pictures, you guys can determine, okay, this is a first edition, this is STA001, et cetera, et cetera. So $500 it just sold for. This is Canadian, however, and TCG Player, you guys have to keep in mind, is also an American price. So 475 American is actually a lot more than 500 Canadian. But if you guys see that it sold for 500 Canadian, if we do just a quick CAD to USD, we can check that 500 Canadian is around $380. So that means it just sold two days ago for $380. So don't necessarily look at 475 and necessarily expect to get that. Now, this is a good start, but when it comes to these big players over here, and as you guys can see, there's only real two listings. So because there's not that many listings as well, this is where you want to start to go to other courses. I know it may seem complicated, but it, it's really not that complicated. What you really want to do is, again, do the basics that I told you. Check the card number. I'll go back over here real quick. We want to check the card number. Once you check the card number, you want to check if it's first edition or not. And from there, start to look at multiple sources. Now, I'm going to link some other sources down below, but another source you guys can use is Troll and Toad. Troll and Toad has some prices as well. However, the thing with Troll and Toad is, let's say we go Blue Eyes, Blue Eyes White Dragon over here, and you find the card, but it says sold out, right? If a card is sold out, it's hard to determine the value because the price that is going to be shown is the last sale of the card. So if the last sale of the card, for example, was like a year ago, then there's going to be a difference in price because it's going to continue to say that price for the card that's sold. So over here, for example, this is a uh, SDK001, but this is an unlimited actually, so it's not actually first edition. Let's see if we can find a first edition somewhere. And so right over here, we actually do see a Blue Eyes White Dragon. SDK is the card number. First edition, you guys can see over here. And there's a played one, so it's played, not near mint, for around 350 Now, this is where you can start to talk to your seller if you're buying the card, or if you're selling the card, you start to talk to your buyer and say, okay, well, here's the approximate range. It goes for between around $350 to $450. If someone offers you like $425, $400, whatever, that's where the talks come in. But that is pretty much how you check your values for your cards. Now, this, again, like I showed you, could be done for any card. If you guys want to check a Dark Magician, for example, you just type in Dark Magician, you go for the same thing. You go through your Dark Magician print things over here, you check what the code is, let's say you have a BBT, or let's say you have a, a, a YAP, or a Duelist League one, doesn't matter, an LOB Dark Magician for example, let's say we press that, then we check if our card is first edition or unlimited. This one obviously doesn't show a first edition, but if your card shows first edition, you, you're still on the right track. Go LOB, first edition, now you're going to scroll down, try to find the listing, etc, etc. So that's how you go about going through prices, right? There's a lot of different websites you can use, there's a lot of different resources, but TCG Player is one that's just really accurate. And if you guys don't see a lot of listings on TCG Player, that's when I start to go through eBay, Troll and Toad, etc, etc, to find different prices and different listings. So thank you guys for watching. I know this was kind of a longer video, but I hope it was informative. I hope it kind of helps you understand how to price your Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Now, you're not always going to be working with a Blue Eyes White Dragon. I just wanted to show you guys this as an example. However, literally the same three steps. The card code or card number, the first edition, and then the condition. That's literally what the three steps are. And then once you go from there, literally any card, any price is at your fingertips. Now, one thing I wanted to get out before we actually just ended this video is uh, YGO prices. I actually don't trust them very much. And the reason I say that is because let's say we go on the Blue Eyes White Dragon over here, right? We're going to want to look for the SDK one that we were just looking at, right? So I'm just going to wait for this to load. And I'm just going to show you guys an example as to why I don't think this is the most trustworthy. And actually, this is perfect. They're loaded, so I don't have to make any cuts here. Let's just scroll down and try to find an SDK001. There's a lot of prints for the Blue Eyes, so this might take a while, but... I'll find it, I'll find it, don't worry, I'll find it. Okay, so I finally found one, SDK001, this was a lot of scrolling, but as you guys can see, the average says $38 for an SDK. The thing is, this doesn't take into account first edition or unlimited, so a lot of people might get confused by this average, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go through listings. However, the problem is the listings aren't always accurate. So the reason I say that is because sometimes people on eBay will mislist their things because you guys can see these are listings off of eBay. You can also probably find listings off TCG Player. Yeah, right over here, TCG Player listings. So what this website does is it takes random listings from different websites and puts them into one thing and then calculates the average. 
The problem with the average is, again, it's not taking into account unlimited versus first edition. On top of that, if someone lists the price for a ridiculous amount, just an unrealistic amount, then that's also really bad. So if you guys scroll down over here, you guys can, for example, see an unlimited for $327 and it's not even first edition. So if we actually open the tab here, you guys can see it's on eBay. Someone put up a non first edition for $300. The pictures, it does look pretty good condition. I mean, I'd have to take better pictures or better look at the pictures, I should say. However, oh, right over here, actually. Right over here, you can see that there's actually some damages on the card. I don't know if it'll just show right there. But there's some damages right over here on the card. So that's not even near mint. So someone put it up as near mint, but clearly there's damages on the card. Not going to be a near mint, but they're, they're charging you as if it's almost like a first edition card. So this is where you kind of have to start looking at, you know, do I trust YGO prices that well? Because the thing is with eBay, again, like I said, is you really want to only use eBay if it's sold listings, what cards actually sell for. Because a lot of people who are not knowledgeable will be posting stuff on eBay, putting random prices just because they think it's expensive, right? I saw someone put a Blackluster Soldier, the ritual one, the original one, for like $200 because it was a quote unquote rare card. Like, not really. In the terms of the Yu-Gi-Oh market, it's not hard to find and it's very easy to get your hands on. So the price actually is not that high. So that's why I don't trust this app too much if I'm being completely honest with you. The most easiest way to go to is TCG Player. It's very good. Again, this video is not sponsored by TCG Player. So again, if you guys enjoyed this video and you thought this video was informative, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more. I just thought this was a really good way to get newer players or people who are coming back into the game after a long time just to get a head start and so that they can actually accurately price out their cards or if they're looking to buy cards for their own collection, they can accurately find a price that they would pay for that card. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate every single one of you guys. And with that, Spanko yes. signing out. Peace. My hands steady. I feel ready, but my legs heavy. I don't get it. How come I haven't hit it already? Still working. I'm still learning. I'm still searching. Finally earning something. Finally turning something called a profit. If I hear you talking shit, don't get caught in it. I'll be popping off and hit your ass, dropping all your shit. Yeah, I promise this. I got promises. You ain't stopping this. Cross my shit.